good evening traders it's Samurai Trader welcome to our recap today's recap I'm recapping yesterday's ES the Globex market the aftermarket the 144 ES tick bar so once the US market closes down and we have the aftermarket it's great for our traders in uh, the US that choose to or that are working and uh, want to get home and trade after hours and of course this is during the day here in Australia and Southeast Asia so I was training live and we took a couple of uh, trades which I'll run you through today and uh, a couple of things I'd like to, to bring up first of all the first thing is this your mistakes your losing trades can be your best teachers if you're asked if you ask yourself intelligent questions such as what can I learn from this questions can be empowering or disempowering so as Tony Robbins says he calls it can I constant and never-ending improvement so when you have a losing trade what I want you to do is to ask yourself intelligent questions such as what can I learn from this what will I do differently next time how can I improve my entry how could I improve my exit how could I better qualify the trade ask the questions receive the answers but ask intelligent questions please that is quite often where we put ourselves down with disempowering statements geez I'm a dumbass geez I'm dumb I can never master this I'll never do this and in coaching traders I hear this on a regular basis and once again words can be empowering or disempowering and a trader can be their own worst enemy so getting back to what I say every single training session is that if you're a new trader or if you're a trader that's struggling go back to the drawing board board and start with one trade a trend following trade that is mechanical in nature that is probably 90% rules based because that way it's a lot easier to hold yourself accountable and of course make sure there's no red flag news announcements and all the other things that that go with it so what I'm going to quickly do is go through a few counter trend trades that we took yesterday um, and we'll also look at the trend trade so let's have a quick look at some of these so first of all uh, the market opens uh, the evening market for the US opens 9 a.m. here in Australia we can see we rallied up a little after the close there was no gap ups then we had a t1 and your entry was not until this candle but you also had what we call a t2 so you had a, a, a first of all a signal for the t2 here then a t1 uh, and that would have delivered you and we weren't on that trade but that would have been good for about four ticks in total now as you know I am seeking six ticks uh, on average in the day market because generally my stop is somewhere between six and eight ticks so I will really want to have on average a one-to-one -one risk reward which is very important so there there was only four ticks I was not on that trade but you can see here I decided to short here with what we call a t19 trade my experience trade is the ones I coach know what a t19 is it's not an a it's only a t19 B so we've got a t19 there we had a lower low on the platinum we had a high high on price uh, it's a little twist on a standard divergence trade now that was uh, we shorted 10 as you can see there and that was good for uh, six ticks exactly we got it right out on the tick then we had a t1 now it was almost an 89 EMA bounce and as we know we love the bounces off the 89 day in a day out uh, doesn't matter which market you trade where you've got some volatility you're going to bounce uh, off the 89 on a regular basis as a standalone trading strategy so go and apply an 89 EMA and you'll see what I mean now what we've got here is for t1 your entry however if you follow the rules that is the rules is that you want to wait for the zero lag here turn from magenta to cyan so you're in on this one uh, that was good for around four to five ticks as well uh, not quite what I would have been after but you would have been out of it anyway and there's a couple of reasons we won't go into them now but we had a double top form which is where I jumped in now I was uh, training at the time I didn't jump in until here 
I wanted to get in at a better price and one thing about trading this market after hours unless it's a news announcement uh, it's it's quite slow it's actually a great market for 144 tick to uh, learn how to trade on or to start real-time trading on because it is fairly slow unless you've got a red flag in Europe or, or Australia or something like that so we can see here the trade station plots automatically where I was filled and where I got out now what I did put down here a couple of things first of all watch the time of day when you're trading the after hours market when US goes to sleep that is as it gets quite late in the US or early in the morning or later uh, or after lunch or later in the Australian afternoon you'll find the market generally slows right down as an example this is 1:30 a.m. here and this is over here this is 6 p.m. so you can see here this took four and a half hours to move this far so it really slows down so you want to really uh, take uh, be aware of that now also I lifted um, uh, my target to only five ticks due to the pivot so see the black line there that was my pivot but there was also something else happening and what was that the 89 you bounce off the 89 so often so here I'd already had it already tested at one tick below so I lifted my stop or my, my target from six ticks to five ticks where, where it touched and was out and filled me right to the tick so even then perhaps it would have been a little safer to, to actually have my target only one point so remember when you trade against the 89 you're going to bounce probably a good 80% of the time so you want to be really careful perhaps have a smaller target if my entry was much closer to the 89 I would not have taken that trade because once again the 89b remember practice it look at it uh, the 89 bounce over here we had a, a, an 89 bounce virtually again and a T1 your entry wouldn't have been over till here but look at this here um, you had a rising long-term stochastic so it's almost a money on the floor trade very very close to a money on the floor in actual fact here it would have been you and some traders no doubt took that as the money on the floor but I recommend waiting for your zero lag and that was great for a good eight ticks now uh, we'd only taken those I had a, an appointment in the afternoon so I took those we'd finished our session so I didn't take any more trades on this particular market but we can see what happened then we had a beautiful um, uh, t19 here higher high now I do prefer to see a lower high on the platinum but of course if you're a trend trader remember become a master at one setup develop reflex action blink of an eye stuff don't move on to divergence trades until you master and you're consistently making money with trend trading so we roll over that was a great trade for those people who took that we rolled over by this time at 6 p.m. the uh, European market opens at around 6 you've got the pre-market at 5 Queensland time then you've got the main market and you can get very bouncy here though uh, we had a perfect money on the floor we've got zero lag falling away as we can see here short term goes up rolls over and that was only good for four or five ticks but where would have your stop been look over here look to the left and look at that resistance on the pivot bar on the uh, sorry the uh, the pivot point so we've already pointed out we've had a number of bounces back a little further and actually let me just get rid of this over here so I can come back and just show you my main pointer so we can see here we had a pivot and we had a pivot bounce over here so you've got pivot bounces so you've also got a rising uh, 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 platinum so a lot of traders the experience ones would have taken this you had a pivot bounce you had divergence on your platinum uh, and it's almost an uh, a t89 now a t89 for a reminder this was a t89 up here when you have your entry signal plot outside the channel and you've got angulation away from the channel okay and you have got a number of candles away from the zero lag and you plot outside it that is a t89 I would have liked more room that's why I put the question mark that was a t89 here got a paint bar we've got a short signal one could argue well look um, we're heading down but what have we got we're going to bounce which it did we bounced off the 89 and look at this 89 it's not 
trending beware red signals flashing <laughs> when you see a sideways 89 what's it going to do and when your entry is right on the 89 remember earlier I said I wouldn't have taken the trade because of bounces and which is exactly what it did but there's a second reason look at your zero lag it's cyan it has not turned magenta as I mentioned it will save you that many times we come on up we had a pivot bounce uh, then you had an entry I would not have taken that trade it just wasn't my cup of tea by the way because why my platinum still rising for some traders they said yep great I would have been in now what have we also got here we've got a rise in long-term stochastic and you did have here a money on the floor trade which was a very very nice four to eight tick trade so you could have got in you might have said okay let's get in on this one wait for a clearer crossover you've got two signals a rising stochastic and a rollover if you had have waited for a very clear rollover you would not have taken that trade and the reason you wouldn't have taken that one look how far outside the channel we are we're a good point the five ticks outside which should be ringing alarm bells why because remember the further outside the channel you move the more likely you likely you are for a snap back back in to the channel and you'll see this time and time again so moving along and look what happened then so we're getting to um, uh, let me just scroll along a little more for you we had uh, look at this we've got Look at 89 you may heading down you've got a bounce as well as you had a t11 you've got a lower high with a paint bar you've also got a perfect t2 what's the difference between a t2 and a t10 a money on the floor I like to see the long-term stochastic oversold or overbought and for the experienced traders we know that there's no such thing as really being oversold or overbought but it's what we call it and you've gone up and the slingshot down now you also had a t1 setting up so you had a t11 a t1 and a t2 and that was great for six to eight ticks then lo and behold another 89 bounce it didn't quite touch the 89 but you had a perfect uh, t1 setup that was only good for six ticks then you had another one look at this now the only negative you would say here is that your long-term stochastic is not oversold it's sort of in the middle here which is not ideal however you've got a good strong trending 89 EMA so another one bang now ladies and gentlemen you would have been you know if you're just trading the evening market here in Australia just on these trades and you had a t25 or a t2 you would have packed your bags and gone home here once again what if you had have got in on this one get a t25 the t25 is where you have two to five candle pullback then a reversal candle and yes the zero lag agreed so you could have been on here however if you're focused on t1s t2s you your run of the mill plain vanilla setups you would have been in here and of course your stop would have been there or thereabouts your, your exit so traders if you haven't already subscribed to my youtube channel please do and uh, please subscribe and i'll keep updating you with my trades of the day thank you